for Ghana as a whole. Personal protective equipment, PPE, is vital for ensuring our doctors can safely treat the virus. But these goods are in short supply and Ghana's frontline medical staff are suffering as a result. I have been investigating one reason why PPE is disappearing. I am investigative journalist Anas Arimiao Anas. My team have been undercover in one of Ghana's best hospitals, where some staff have been selling vital PPE for personal profits. Okay. Buying and diverting supplies while their colleagues risk their lives to save our people. That's wickedness. Greater Accra Regional Hospital is ground zero for COVID-19 in Ghana. When the virus arrived, they faced a potentially disastrous lack of PPE. Government called for hospitals to gather as much as possible, and the country rallied around to help. You are the frontline defense of the population against the disease, and we must all support you to be able to protect us. But I received multiple reports from hospital staff that some of their colleagues had formed a clandestine network to cash in on the crisis. My sources identified Mr. Thomas Osei, a hospital pharmacy worker. We soon confirmed these reports, secretly filming Thomas sell multiple loads of PPE inside the hospital. Protective coveralls for 600 CDs, 105 US dollars. On another day, nine set of coveralls. Yeah. That one is good to the workers, mm. the nurses. Uh, yeah. Is it the same type? Yeah. Is it the same oh, type of? The same system. Okay. Thomas seemed completely at ease, unconcerned about selling off this life-saving medical equipment in plain sight within the hospital. And then he sold us multiple face shields, equipment that medical workers have been crying out for. The total bill came to 450 US dollars. Renowned surgeon Dr. Hadi Abdallah has faced a lack of PPE while treating COVID patients. It's unbelievable. <laughs> This is, this is so bad. He was shocked by our findings. If you look at the facial, my head of department tried on it on his own to try and create some for us. And apparently we had some in the country and people were selling it. Like that's that's wickedness. Every two weeks the president makes a statement, tells the the, the public, how much PPEs they have contributed towards the fight of COVID. And we on the ground never saw it and we kept complaining. More than 2,000 medical workers in Ghana have been infected by coronavirus. We work in a system where people were told that they had to manage with two or three marks for a whole week. If they, they can be so callous and wicked like that, knowing that when health workers don't have this protective gear, they are putting their lives and the life of their uh, families at risk, I think they don't deserve to work there. And I think they should be severely punished by the law. We put our allegations to Thomas, who admitted he had sold PPE. He claimed he did it for personal business, that the goods did not belong to the hospital and provided receipts for the items. When we investigated the receipts, we were informed by the companies that wrote them that they were all written retrospectively under Thomas's supervision and backdated. The CEO of one supplier said they did sell Thomas PPE but believed it was for the hospital. The goods were intended for exclusive use of frontline staff not for private sale. On the 9th of April, they had a call for a purchase of 
nice face shield to be delivered to Rich Hospital. And I do not condone in selling to hospitals for private people to sell to the public. Another hospital staff member was also filmed selling PPE, Divine Kumoji. The hospital began sewing their own masks for staff when they began facing shortages. Divine was filmed selling hundreds of these PPEs on site for 140 US dollars. Divine didn't respond to us, but management at Greater Accra Regional Hospital launched an investigation after receiving our allegations. Both Divine and Thomas have since been suspended for privately selling PPE in breach of hospital rules. All the PPE bought during this investigation has been donated to frontline medical staff. But questions remain. How much of Ghana's vital PPE has gone missing? And how many lives could it have saved?